hello friends welcome back to my channel today i would like to share with you the concept states of matter kinetic theory and ideal gases the assumptions of ideal gases are molecules are in constant random motion in straight lines molecules are rigid spheres the distance between the gas molecules is much greater than the diameter of the molecules so the volume of the molecules is negligible Pressure is due to molecules colliding with the walls of the container and all collisions are elastic. Temperature is proportional to the average kinetic energy of the molecules. For a gas to approach ideal behavior, temperature must be high enough above the boiling point so that there are no intermolecular forces between molecules. Pressure must be low enough so that the volume of the individual molecules is negligible relative to the volume of the container. Limitations of ideality. The ideal gas law has limitations of ideality at high pressures and very low temperatures. This is because at high temperatures the gas molecules get more crowded which is not accounted for in the equation. At very low temperatures the effect of intermolecular forces is much more prominent as the molecules have less kinetic energy to overcome the attractions. Gas pressure. Gases in a container exert a pressure as the gas molecules are constantly colliding with the wall of the container. Changing gas volume. Decreasing the volume at constant temperature of the container causes the molecules to be squashed together which results in more frequent collisions with the container wall and the pressure of the gas increases. The volume is therefore inversely proportional to the pressure at constant temperature. A graph of volume of gas plotted against 1 over pressure gives a straight line. Changing gas temperature. Increasing the temperature at constant volume of the gas causes the molecules to gain more kinetic energy. This means that the particles will move faster and collide with the container walls more frequently and the pressure of the gas increases. The temperature is therefore directly proportional to the pressure at constant volume. A graph of temperature of gas plotted against pressure gives a straight line. The ideal gas equation. For an ideal gas, we can combine the laws about how the volume of a gas depends on temperature and pressure. We also know that the volume of a gas is proportional to the number of moles present. Putting all these together gives us the general gas equation PV equals nRT, where P is the pressure in pascals, V is the volume of gas in cubic meters, 1 meter cube equals 1000 dm cube. N is the number of moles of a gas, N equals M over MR, R is the gas constant which has a value of 8.31 joules per Kelvin per mole, temperature is T which is in Kelvin K. Bonding and structure is the next subtopic. The first one is giant ionic lattices. Positive and negative ions alternate in a three-dimensional structure held by ionic bonds. Example, sodium chloride, Na plus and Cl minus ions. In magnesium oxide, there are Mg2 plus and O2 minus ions. These are the structures representing the giant ionic lattices of sodium chloride and magnesium oxide. The properties of ionic compounds. They are hard. It takes a lot of energy to scratch the surface because of the strong attractive forces keeping the ions together. They are brittle. Ionic crystals may split apart when hit in the same direction as the layers of ions. The layers of ions may be displaced by the force of the blow so that ions with the same charge come together. The repulsions between thousands of ions in the layers all with the same charge cause the crystal to split along these cleavage planes. They have high melting points and high boiling points because the attraction between the large numbers of oppositely charged ions in the lattice acts in all directions and bonds them strongly together. The melting points and boiling points increase with the charge density on the ions. So magnesium oxide has a higher melting point than sodium chloride. This is because there is a greater electrostatic attraction between doubly charged ions than singly charged ions of similar size. Many of them are soluble in water. They only conduct electricity when molten or in solution. Covalent lattices. Covalent compounds can be arranged in simple molecular or giant molecular lattices. Simple molecular lattices examples are iodine, 
Buck Minister Fullerene and Ice, Giant Molecular Lattices Example, Silicon 4 Oxide, Graphite and Diamond. Simple molecular or covalent lattices are the molecules which held together by van der Waals forces in a cubic structure. Example iodine molecule which has got FCC structure as shown here. Ice which has hydrogen bonding. Buckminster fullerene carbon 60 has a ball like structure made up of hexagons and pentagons of carbon atoms with van der Waals forces between molecules. The next comes giant molecular structures. Example diamond, each carbon shares an electron with four other carbon atoms. The physical properties of diamond, high melting and boiling points, there is strong covalent bonding throughout the whole structure. A lot of energy is needed to break these strong bonds and separate the atoms. Hardness, diamond cannot be scratched easily because it is difficult to break the three dimensional network of strong covalent bonds. Does not conduct electricity or heat. Each of the four outer electrons on every carbon atom is involved in covalent bonding. This means that there are no free electrons available to carry the electric current. The next example is graphite. Hexagons of carbon atoms in layers with each carbon atom covalently bonded to three carbon atoms. One delocalized electron per carbon atom forms van der Waals forces between the layers. The physical properties of graphite, high melting and boiling points, there is strong covalent bonding throughout the layers of carbon atoms. A lot of energy is needed to overcome these strong bonds. Softness, graphite is easily scratched. The forces between the layers of carbon atoms are weak. The layers of graphite can slide over each other when a force is applied. The layers readily flake off. This flakiness is why graphite is used in pencil leads and feels slippery. Good conductor of electricity. When a voltage is applied, the delocalized electrons or mobile electrons can move along the layers. The next example is silicon 4 oxide. Similar 3D structure to diamond with oxygen and silicon atoms covalently bonded together. Physical properties of silicon dioxide. Each silicon atom is bonded to four oxygen atoms, but each oxygen atom is bonded to only two silicon atoms. So the formula for silicon 4 oxide is SiO2. Silicon dioxide has properties similar to that of diamond. It forms hard, colorless crystals with high melting and boiling points, and it does not conduct electricity. Sand is largely silicon 4 oxide. The next type of lattices are metallic lattices. A metallic lattice consists of ions surrounded by a sea of electrons. The ions are often packed in hexagonal layers or in a cubic arrangement. When a force is applied, the layers can slide over each other, but in a metallic bond, the attractive forces between the metal ions and the delocalized electrons act in all directions. When the layers slide, a new metallic bonds are easily reformed between ions in new lattice positions and the delocalized electrons. The delocalized electrons continue to hold the ions in the lattice together. The metal now has a different shape. This explains why metals are malleable and ductile. The high tensile strength and hardness of most metals is due to the strong attractive forces between the metal ions and the delocalized electrons. That's all. Thank you so much for watching this video.